Well, I'm Dan Ferris, and I'm going to introduce the next speaker, who is Ken Lewis. I tried to remember all this, but I just can't. He's done too much stuff. So Ken Lewis is the CEO of Atmex, Inc. and One Gold. For almost 20 years, Atmex has been one of the nation's largest precious metals retailers, serving a million customers and fulfilling over 10 billion in sales. Since joining the company in 2011, Ken has overseen significant growth and innovation like One Gold, a next gen generation gold and silver buying platform. One Gold is a partnership between Atmex and alternative asset manager Sprott. Sprott, Sprott. I've heard of them somewhere. It's familiar. I'll, I'll think of it. It'll come to me. The One Gold platform is experiencing double digit monthly growth since its inception. Wow, I didn't know that. This rapid growth indicates investor demand for digital precious metal products in the marketplace, but there are potential risks to investors who may not understand how to evaluate a digital precious metals retailer. Ken will step us through how digital precious metals should work and what to look for in an ideal retailer. Please welcome Ken Lewis. Thanks, man. All right. Appreciate it. Tear it up. All right, man. Thanks everybody for the time, and uh, of course, thanks to John for taking one for the team, man, because uh, following Dennis Miller is, uh, that's a tough thing to follow. Um, so what I'm going to do today is uh, hopefully walk you guys a little bit about uh, the gold market, where it is, um, kind of what's going on, what's the landscape look like, should you own gold in your portfolio. I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about different ways you can have a gold investment, whether it be physical, ETF, uh, or digital gold, and then I'll dive a little bit deeper into, uh, into digital gold. So uh, without further ado, uh, we'll just kind of jump into it. So one of the things we look at as a physical precious metal dealer is we constantly are reading the analyst reports. And how is gold doing? How is gold doing as an investment option for you? The chart doesn't lie. Uh, this is going back to the year 2000, and it looks at asset classes and where you can put your money. Um, the fact of the matter is gold is the second best performing asset class since the year 2000. And I bet that surprises many of you in the audience because we think of gold as a safe haven investment. We think of some of the tough years it's had over the last uh, four or five years and we don't necessarily look at it as a high performing investment per se. But the reality is the numbers speak differently to that. Uh, so it's actually performed very well. The only asset class frankly outperforming it is real estate. You also see an interesting trend there. In 2019 pretty much everything's moving up and moving very aggressively. And that's something we all need to pay attention to, I think, in the future when we think about where to put our money and where to put our investments. I do want to make one disclaimer, too. Uh, I'm not going to give investment advice. Uh, we, we want to take care of our customers. We want to sell you precious metals. But you've got to decide whether that's right for you and your situation and how much you should own. Gentlemen like uh, Stansberry do a great job of educating you on the principles of it and, and where it might fit your situation. So why gold? Why would you want to have it in your portfolio? What makes it attractive? to the everyday investor. Um, there's a few things that uh, you know, his history kind of teaches us. First and foremost, gold tends to perform inversely to the market. Go back to 2008. Think about what happened in our equities markets at that time. And look how gold performed. You can even look at the years 2012 through 16. You can see where gold struggled. But the equities markets did very well. It's one of those kind of investments that have a natural hedge. It's great for a diversification strategy. You'd be silly to put all your money into gold. I'd be the first to tell you I would never do that. But at the same time, you'd probably be silly not to consider it for a portion of your investment portfolio, just because of the way it performs inversely to things like the equities market. And of course, inflation. You've heard it over and over again. Um, I had my team pull some data since 1990. It blows my mind to think about how the dollar continues to lose its value. And I know we could talk about the impact of the Fed and what the Fed does on the market, uh, based on the previous speaker, but the reality of it is, inflation's real, and it does devalue the dollar. In this particular case, you can see it's lost 48% of its value. So putting those dollars in a safe and waiting 20 years, you would have lost 48% of the value of that dollar. Where gold, on the other hand, since 1990, obviously has gone up in value. So it's just something to think about. Um, I can even go back to the year 1913, go way back in time. The dollar's lost 96% of its value, 96%. It, frankly, when I pulled these data, it made me think twice about how much, how much I want to have in terms of dollars sitting in my bank account and, and in my personal safe. It really makes you think twice about it. Should you really hold a large amount of your assets in, in the dollar? It's a great question for you to have to answer. 
So we dive a little bit deeper. What's the landscape for gold and, and the way we look at it as an option today? What drives the price of gold? Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Like, again, I'd like to drive home the fact that I think it's a great diversification strategy. I really could care less. If it goes up, that means my equities may not be performing as well. If it goes down, my equities are doing great. And that's kind of how I like to think about it. But in today's environment, when you read the analyst reports uh, and you read what they're predicting what gold's going to do in the future, many of them are very positive on gold. And you ask yourself, why, why are people talking up gold right now? Why has gold done so well in 2019? And the reality is, you look at world bank demand. World banks are consuming gold at almost record paces, and in some cases, record paces, depending on the country. They're putting a significant strain on the supply of gold. It's driving the price of the metal up. You ask yourself, why would world banks be consuming gold as one of their reserves? And the fact of the case is, many of them are getting off the dollar. They're a little uncomfortable with our U.S. politics and maybe a little bit with the direction we've been going. And they want to diversify some of their exposure to the U.S. economy. Who could blame them? You also look at things like interest rates. People tend to look at gold as an opportunity cost when it comes to the cost of money. When rates are higher, you, you think twice about whether or not you want to hold gold. You can make a return just by keeping your dollars in the bank. In interest rates declining, it tends to be very good for the price of gold. History has shown. Obviously, the tensions in the world today are not at all-time highs. Obviously, we're not, a lot of wars are not going on and things like that. But when you look at all this trade conversations and the challenges it's putting on the different economies of the world, you can't, you can't ignore it. You can't ignore it. Look at the GDP growth in various countries around the world. It's a concern. And of course, the value of the dollar. Dollar's been trading close to an all-time high for, for a while now. Do we think that dollar is going to continue that pace in the future? Uh, if you answer uh, that you have concerns, then that's probably good for gold. That's actually the one metric I like to look at the most is the dollar. When the dollar does go down in value, you really do see and tend to see gold perform well. So look, I can't tell you whether gold's going to go up in value. What I can tell you is the landscape seems to be very, very favorable for the price of gold in the future. So how do you, how do you own a position in gold? Uh, and I heard earlier a great presentation about buying mining stocks and where they explore for gold. And the return on investment of those are astronomical. I'm not talking about that kind of exposure to gold. There's high risk and high returns. And, and that can work for you depending on your situation. I'm really talking about physical gold here, uh, or really is really tied to the physical price of gold. And really there's three ways to own that. You can own physical in your home or in storage. You can own ETFs or you can own digital. So look, I'm the largest physical precious metal dealer in the world today. We do almost a billion dollars a year in volume, 550,000 orders a year. We know, we know physical, we know it very well actually. Our partner in our digital solution, Sprott, is one of the largest ETF players in the precious metal space. So we have a pretty good understanding of that as well. And we're building knowledge up on the digital side. So as you look at those options, and I know there's many in this audience that believe in physical and believe in having it in their homes, I'm, I'm right there with you. I believe physical has elements. It actually helps you address certain concerns you may have in the markets today. I've outlined for you a few of the pros when it comes to physical, and of course some of the con concerns are or the cons. One of the biggest things about physical is it's off the grid. It's yours. It's a great way to pass inheritance. You're not dependent on the financial systems and who knows what's going to happen in the future uh, when it comes to that. Um, it's just something that's tangible. You really feel comfortable knowing you have a certain amount of assets uh, under, your, under your hands. But there are some concerns with physical. It tends to be a little expensive when you compare it to the price of metal. Um, security is probably the biggest one that I always like to coach people on. Seriously think about how you're protecting that investment in your home um, and making sure you're protected at all times. Um, and of course, when you go to sell, it's not always the easiest thing to do. And I'll be the first to tell you Atmex has tried to make the selling of physical precious metal as easy as you possibly can get. You call up, you do a deal, we send you a ship label, it's fully insured, it takes two days, you get paid on the third, call it a day. So it's getting easier and easier as retailers become smarter and smarter about how to do business with customers in that space. So physical, obviously a big part of my business, it's the dominant part of my business, um, and it, it's done very well over the last few years. Physical demand today in the markets are not where they were three years ago. Uh, we're down about 25% in overall consumption of physical compared to where it was. But we're still very healthy, not like two years ago where it was really at its bottom. So it's, a, it's an interesting market on the physical side, a big two-way market, a lot of selling going on and a lot of buying. Uh, normally you see one or the other, you don't see both. On the ETF side, 
when you dive into the ETF side, obviously um, there's convenience, right? You can go to your brokerage account, you can buy it. Uh, depending on the situation, metal may there, be there, metal may not be there. I think some people wonder about whether or not it's really truly covered by a physical asset. And what happens with the counterparty risk? And am I exposed? Do I have title? Do I have ownership of that metal? And the answer generally is you do not. And you need to be concerned about that when you're evaluating ETFs. But I love the fact that ETFs brought ma the masses to precious metal demand. Right? It made it easy. It made people more aware of precious metals in their portfolio. And it's been a good thing overall for the market. There are some concerns. Costs can be high. When you're paying 40 basis points a year, um, you've got to factor that into your return on investment. You can't take redemption. You, I mean, you can if you want to go out and do a 400-ounce gold bar. But honestly, getting redemption is really not something that it supports. Um, and again, I've already talked about the counterparty risk. So both of these are viable options. And depending on your situation, I would recommend you consider these and do your own homework. Um, I'm going to talk about digital in a second, but I know this audience heard a lot about cryptocurrencies. And I want to talk about gold-backed cryptocurrencies for a second. They're called stable coins. There's one that just launched a couple of weeks ago. My, my caution to you is to be cautious. Do your research. Right, cryptos, I do believe, in four, five, six years, is going to be very relevant in our market. They've got some work to do, though. There's some big concerns out there. The dream is a good dream, right? Make it where it's uh, you know, asset-backed fully if you have gold. Make it where it's low cost. Make it completely liquid. Um, allow you to have it off the grid and have that privacy that you want. Uh, make it easy to redeem or use that uh, investment. It's a great vision. It's a great vision. The reality, though, is not that. The reality is that there's a lot of question marks when it comes to cryptocurrencies. I was reading an article re recently. The number one failing crypto investment right now, stable coins, are gold-backed stable coins. Gold-backed stable coins. I read an article literally today where a company raised $90 million based out of Miami. Actually, it's based out of Germany, but did the ICO. The state of Florida is investigating them. $95 million ICO raise. No gold. No gold. Think about that if you're an investor in that. It'd be a rude awakening, very rude awakening. So obviously you have, to be, you have to do your research. Is the gold really there? How are you protected? How do they give you the confidence the gold's there? How do you make sure the cost is really reasonable? A lot of these exchanges are charging fees that you might be surprised when you add them all up. There really isn't a two-way market. There's a product you just launched. We called them up and we said, hey, if I wanted to go out and instantly sell some product back to you, when can I do that? The answer was, well, first I've got to raise $7 million. Then you've got to hold it for 12 months. Then you can do that. And basically, by the time you got done, you realized it's not a very clear two-way market at this stage of the game. And of course, regulatory issues, right? Where is the government going to land when it comes to cryptos, and how is that going to work? Um, I think there's a lot of big question marks out there. So my point to the audience is I'm about to talk about a product that's not a cryptocurrency, and purposely not a cryptocurrency. When Sprott and I got together and we built this one gold concept, we honestly went down the route of getting a lot of legal advice on how to make sure we're not going down the regulatory route and concerns that come with, with cryptocurrencies. We didn't want to go down that, that path. We didn't think it was good for consumers. So what is digital gold? Um, so there are other offerings in the market, not just the one gold product we launched in January. Um, and I really believe it brings the best of, of both worlds to the table. It takes the, the physical elements that are really powerful, and it takes some of the ETF elements that are powerful, and it combines them into one offering. So first and foremost, it needs to be 100% backed by gold. You need to have confidence that the gold is there. We do that in different ways. Other players do it in different ways. But you as a consumer need to make sure the gold is there. The cost should be fair. We're charging 30 basis points. So five cents for silver, just so you know. $4.50 for gold per ounce. That's what our model allows us to charge. We do that because we're able to go out and source institutionally. We're able to buy it in bulk. We're also able to buy it in pool form at times. So it allows us to offer a better price to you as a consumer. It needs to be highly liquid. You should be able to hit a button, have it cash out, and have the funds deposited in your bank account in a matter of seconds. That's how it should work. And if it doesn't work that way, then someone's designed it incorrectly. You have title. I tell that constantly. Anyone who owns digital gold, if it's done the right way, you have title. And it should show that plain, plain, as, plain as day in their FAQs. And why is that really relevant? If for any reason one goal were to struggle, it's your metal. It is absolutely your metal. There is no doubt about it. Your metal's segregated. It's not commingled. You own title. You get that title for whatever reason the company were to struggle. And what's beautiful about digital is it allows you to do a lot of other things that we can't do on the physical side. 
let's say you want redemption. Let's say you want to take some of that physical gold back. You literally go onto the one gold of sight, and you can actually liquidate right there and then uh, and have gold eagles or silver maples or whatever you want shipped to your home same day. It makes it very, very simple to do. It also builds a foundation for other things, like lending, for example. We're very excited about offering a lending solution come the first of next year where you can borrow against your investment if you so wanted to. Um, and do that in a matter of a couple clicks on a phone. Why make it hard? We have your assets. You're, doing, you're borrowing against that asset. It should be cheaper than going to a bank and borrowing money, and we will make it cheaper than borrowing, bank from a, uh, borrowing money from a bank. So a lot of good things, uh, currencies and other things to come. So how does one gold compare, um, or digital gold more specifically? You can read through the list here. Uh, try to take the best of physical, the best of the ETFs, and combine it into one. There are always still going to be some challenges. The technology, by the way, I'll tell you, if done right, should be super simple to use. Very intuitive. Very, very, very much something that you can embrace in a matter of seconds or minutes, not something that takes hours to research. So we're real excited about where it's going. Um, it's going it's, our product's been very successful this year. Customers are responding to it very well. I'm going to have Dan come out here in a little bit, and he's going to ask some questions that might be on your minds. I did a podcast a few months ago. Man, Dan, Dan drilled me. He, he hit me with the hardest questions he can come up with, I'm pretty confident. Um, and we were able to answer those in a matter of minutes, because, or seconds, excuse me, because you know, we're transparent. It's very straightforward. There should be a straightforward answer for you on pretty much any tough question you can ask. So, uh, when you're evaluating digital metal, um, there's questions that we want you to ask. We want to make sure you do your homework. Uh, there are definitely things that we want to make sure you're protected on. Um, and by the way, when you get a copy of this presentation, we're going to give you a checklist for a physical retailer and an ETF retailer. My job is to try to educate you. I'm confident when you do your research, you'll want to do business with the companies that I lead. I'm confident in that because we take care of our customers, make them number one, and we make it transparent. So things I would look at if I was in your shoes when you're evaluating a digital retailer, um, and you can see them here. Uh, are they insured? How transparent are they? Who audits their inventory positions? We use a top five accounting firm, and in the case of Canada, we have the Royal Canadian Mint holding your product, which is a sovereign mint of the government of Canada, which is a pretty slick deal. Uh, do you have title? Is a company someone you can trust, right? Amex has done over $10 billion in retail demand. Sprott has almost $10 billion in AUM. We think you can trust us. But many people in the crypto and digital space are companies you've never heard of. They got a real pretty board, though, I'll tell you, um, and a lot of great names on it. But the reality is the guys running the business probably have no background in the, in the precious metal space nine times out of ten. Um, are, the, are the features they offer important to you? I'll cover it in a second here, but things like uh, you know, daily cost averaging or, or dollar cost averaging, where you can go in and make an investment every week, every month, Every quarter, put a dollar amount, link your bank account, and let it automatically fund. You can do that in the digital space, and we offer that feature on OneGold today. Make sure you're not getting a token. If anyone says the word token or ICO, if I'm in your shoes, I run for the exits because that's not a good sign. Um, there are horror stories when it comes to that um, because the original owner of the token could eventually have done something incorrect, and they'll go take that token back, and you might be the fifth guy down the road who has the token and now you just lost it because of something the first guy did wrong. You don't want that. Um, and of course, how well the, how well the company's viewed by the customers. Uh, one goal is already up to, I think, north of 800 reviews. We got 4.8 out of 5. If you're not getting taken care of, don't do business with them, um, is what I would tell you. And that also holds true on the physical or the ETF side. So diving a little deeper here, how does the one goal platform work? We're going to be doing a breakout session at 535 today. Um, you can come out and see it. We did one of these up in Vancouver about a month and a half ago. I'm not joking. Uh, we did about an hour, and I think I had 50 questions from the audience. I didn't present. I just answered questions. Um, that's a good thing, by the way, because people are real curious, and they want to know how it works. We're going to actually demo the product live. We'll show you how to go out and actually in, in, you know, engage with the product. But how it works, we make it simple. We do things like how you set your email, how you set your account up. You use email verification. You do two-factor authorization, which has become the norm. And not only that, we allow you to pick the authenticator tool you want to do two-factor, because we want you to know your account's secure at all times. You're able to link your bank account and move money seamlessly between your bank account and, and your one goal platform, which I think is pretty impressive. We recently, and by the way, I got the best IT team in the world. No one comes close. 
Um, we just worked with, uh, with our local banks, and now we can actually take ACHs through that linking of your bank account up to $100,000. Nobody that I know of in this space offers that feature. Why is that important to you? You don't have to do a bank wire now. You can just do a, an ACH up to hundred grand. We also allow you to close a transaction before you fund. You can actually go in, take advantage of the market, you see an opportunity you want to buy, and then the silliest thing, you got to go fund it first and then buy? That's crazy. We let you go ahead and lock your trade in. Lock the price in, take, take, a, take, a, take a position, send the funnies, funds post transaction, which is pretty cool. We always have a process for verification. So I can't sell gold that I don't own. So we are using blockchain technology in the case of our Canadian product. We are evaluating blockchain technology for our US product. And those are the two locations we have product today. But what that means is, is I have to take ownership of the metal before I can assign ownership to the customer. So in the blockchain, the case with the Canadian product, I literally go out and buy product. The rural Canadian Mint updates the blockchain to save my ownership interest. I assign title and ownership once they've done that update. So you know the Royal Canadian Mint has verified the metal is there before I can sell it. Pretty cool concept. And I believe the only scenario like it out there today in the market. Um, very, very important is you need to be able to do 24 seven. And we try to make it so simple. Uh, we have people, it amazes us how many people will buy and sell and use it as a trading platform. Really wasn't designed for that, but it allows for that. Um, you can move between silver and gold at a moment's notice, very simple. Um, and I know probably in the back of your mind you're going, man, this all sounds great, but what does this thing cost? Uh, the reality is, I think I covered earlier, it's 30 basis points is what it is. 30 basis points. And storage is 12 on gold and 30 on silver. And ETF's going to run you about 40 per year on average. So you can see it's very competitive to the ETF markets. Our intention for our customers is we want you to own physical. Obviously, that's my main business. But when you want to take a broader exposure to, to, to precious metals and see an opportunity, don't go buy an ETF. Try a digital gold product. We think you're going to find it will, work your, uh, it will meet your needs. Also, very importantly here is we allow redemption right on site. Other people have launched products out there, and then you go to redeem or you go to pull your money out, it's like pulling teeth. Uh, there's a company in Toronto, a public company in Toronto, I'm not going to name names, I'll let you do the research, that make it very, very difficult for you to pull funds out. It's a matter of a couple clicks. You can buy gold eagles, silver eagles, you name it. Matter of fact, I sell 20,000 different products on Atmex. I've got high premium, I got $200,000 coins, I got $5 coins. You can buy any of those if you so choose. We put 20 products of gold, 20 of silver on the platform. You call us up and you want to buy a 1986 Kruger in, we add it to the site, you buy it, no problem. No problem. So it's a beautiful product, something we're real excited about. Um, I would also say that I'm going to have Dan come out here now and Hopefully ask some of the questions maybe you might have on your minds about how this works. Uh, reminder, uh, we do have a breakout session where we're going to cover the product in more detail if you're, if you're interested. All right. Thank you, Ken. That was great. Um, so we've had a lot of feedback on this, on the Stansberry Investor Hour podcast. Um, and there are two issues that you and I have discussed which people push back on the hardest. And the first one, let's do the easy one first, is the midnight gardeners, right? They want to dig a hole in the garden and have all their gold nearby in their possession and dig it up at night and see it shining in the moonlight. It, and what do, so what do you tell people who only, can only relate to this by having gold in their possession? What do you tell them? Yeah, first and foremost, I said it earlier, I think having physical ownership is a smart thing to do. Um, I think you have to also obviously analyze your situation Make sure you have a secure setup for yourself so you don't have any surprises down the road. Uh, but I think the quick thing I would summarize on that is, is you'd be silly not to think about options like digital and ETFs um, because, you know, frankly, it allows you to take a broader position and then quickly get in and out of it when you so choose. Right. Um, what would happen if the markets had a run and, um, and you wanted to get out of your position? I would tell you if you have physical in the backyard, you're going to have a tough time doing that. It's not going to be the easiest thing to do. Uh, where a digital offering allows you to do that very easily. And what I also like to remind people is, I mean, have you guys tried to store silver of any large amount? <laughs> okay. um, you know, I actually I have my own portfolio out there for people to see. Uh, I'm about 80-20 right now on silver. I'm, I'm very gung-ho, I think, on silver. Um, but I can hold eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 in silver, and it takes up no space because it's all online, which is a beautiful thing. Very good. Um, 
Of course, the other one is a little more complicated. And I was thinking, uh, there, there's four parts, right? If I'm a customer and I want to do a one gold account, there's opening an account and putting money into it. There is buying metal, holding metal, and then selling metal. Yeah. So maybe you could tell me, if you can do it quickly, um, what does this first one cost me? Yeah. What does opening an account and, and putting, you know, a thousand bucks or ten thousand bucks in it cost me? Anything? Sure. Well, the fact of the matter is, I'll, I'll actually pay, pay you to open up an account. Um, and what I mean by that is, I give you five dollars um, to play with. Um, we're so confident in the product that we give you five dollars to go buy silver or gold because we want you to live it. We want you to see just how easy it is to use. And we're confident once you do that, you're going to want to put your own funds in afterwards. So creating an account is no cost. The second thing I would highlight on that is some companies really put you through the paces on the AML side. What we do is we do that once you hit a dollar threshold, and then we don't sit here and ask you, um, you know, what your blood type is, you know, where you went to college, um, you know, all these different things that some guys kind of joke a little bit there, but some guys ask. We get to something simple like give us a copy of your passport, could you let us know where, you're, where you live, and, uh, and then we can go from there and do the proper research. So we make it very easy to create an account, and no cost, obviously. But some people have written in and say, oh, it cost me 3% when I funded my account. <laughs> why, yeah. did, why, did, why did that happen? Well, it's typically someone paying for a credit card. Um, and, and the reality is, I mean, you really shouldn't be buying precious metals with a credit card, just my, right. my two cents on that. Um, but the reality is, I think my average cost is something like 2.5 to 2.6%. We were just looking at the numbers earlier today, is what I have to pay the credit card companies. So I'm telling you guys, I'm only charging 30 basis points, so my margins can't be much better than that, right, if that's all I'm charging. Um, so the reality is for me to absorb a credit card charge is almost impossible. So we charge 2.99 if you want to use a credit card. Um, our cost is about 2.5, so you, can get the, uh, you, get a, you get a feel for it. And that's before we factor in fraud that sometimes does come into play. Right. So I went to my doctor, and I said, it hurts when I do that. And he said, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. So then the next thing is buying metal. Yeah. If I want to buy, you know, whatever, a thousand bucks worth of metal, what does that cost me besides the thousand dollars? Yeah, and, it's, and we take a comics feed, so we pull spot right off the markets. Um, I believe it's traded 20 and a half hours, something like that, 22 hours a day. We can get a live price uh, Sunday afternoon through Friday about 5 o'clock. Uh, and then what we do is we add 30 basis points to that. So whatever the price of metal is doing, that's your cost. It's going to be spot plus 30 basis points. It's very straightforward. Uh, we recognize that, and frankly, one of the challenges I didn't cover earlier, you know, these ETFs that claim to be able to let you buy at spot, the reality is, do your math on it, do your research. Many of them trade at a premium and a discount to, to spot, depending upon where the markets are at that time. So it's a little bit un undetermined. Ours, spot plus 30, no matter what product you buy. Nice. Uh, the next thing was holding. So I want to hang on to my metal for a while. Am I paying you anything for that? Yeah, and it's 12 basis points for gold. It's 30 for silver. $5 minimum fee per quarter. Um, I've actually had some people complain about that, so I want to make sure we're clear about that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's very, very low cost. It should be low cost, right? Um, our, our goal is, and really, we don't make much money on storage. When you look at what I pay to store, there's really hardly any margin left for, for us as a retailer. Our main opportunity for you is to get, make sure you know it's safe. And, by the way, when we say storage, we're not talking about storage in, in Ken's uh, locker over here. We're talking about Brinks, Loomis, um, you know, very secure environments, fully insured facilities at all times, uh, institutional quality metal. We're not talking about, um, you know, door A or something like that sitting out there that's not actually in a physical uh, form that I could sell to banks. You're talking about real physical product that can be sold to banks on a moment's notice. Okay. Uh, so where are we now? We just held our metal and now we want to sell it. Yeah. And what's that going to cost? Me? So it's a 30, 30 basis point spread on the back side. So, so total end to end, it's about 60 bips. 60. Um, there's a little bit of a bid versus ask del delta between gold and silver. So those of you who know, trade that metal can know there's typically a bid and ask. I think our bid ask spread is like 10 cents on silver and something like $2 on gold. So what's beautiful about our site is if you go look it up and look at pricing tab, we're very transparent. There are no other fees. Uh, it is 30 on the front end, 30 on the back end, 12 bips or 30 on the storage, and that's it. There really is nothing else that I can talk about because I don't have any other fees that we charge you. Okay, so how do you compare then? I mean, what, what, 
you know, is there any, somebody out there, is there the Amazon.com of, of gold and silver out there undercutting you somewhere? Uh, <laughs> well, I am the Amazon uh, of, of, of precious metals for the physical side, but, uh, but on the digital <laughs> side, uh, honestly, we don't believe there's something competitive out there. It's the best in class pricing that we believe is available to consumers today. We do our research consistently, uh, but I would encourage you to do your own research. Look, for some reason, you may not want to do business for us. We get it. We understand. Uh, but give us a shot. Ask some questions. Do the online chat. Give us a run. I think you're going to find we're very transparent and can definitely answer your questions. Well, what did people do before this digital? What are they doing now that when they're not doing digital? They're, they're, they're having these, a bullion account, They're right? buried in the backyard, I think, actually. The, no, I'm <laughs> aside from the midnight gardening crowd, if I want to buy metal and, you know, have yeah. it stored and, yeah. you know, buy bullion and, and store it. And yeah, there, there are options out there. Actually, Atmex has a product called Citadel um, where we'll actually store it at Brinks for you. Uh, and charge you a fee for that. That's individual lockerized storage, so it's a little bit more expensive than what we offer on the digital platform. Um, so it's, it, it is an option for you. Uh, others out there, honestly, it's, it's typically physical, it's ideally stored out of Brinks or Loomis. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple other digital offerings out there um, as well that you can compare and contrast to what we do. Okay, but how, you know, am I gonna find like, Am I going to find anybody who's like a whole lot cheaper than one gold? Well, you won't find anyone cheaper, I don't think. But, uh, don't and, and, if you, and if you do, you know, give us a call and let us know. We'd love to know what's, uh, what's out there. More than likely, the only thing that might claim to be cheaper is going to be something called crypto. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I would be very, very hesitant about that. Um, when All you the have gold to, guys hate the crypto. <laughs> when you have to do an ICO raise <laughs> to be able to run your business, right. that ought to tell you enough to, to be concerned. All right. Thank you, Ken. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thanks, everybody.